Hi guys, I got this Actron OBD2 auto scanner, CP9135. It developed a problem with the cable. Uh, pin 16 down here on the lower left broke off. So today we're going to go ahead and we're going to replace this connector with one that I got over here on eBay. And I'll leave the link down in the block below. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and get started on this. Alright, here's all the tools and stuff you'll need. Some forceps, side cutters, round nose pliers, or some sharp needle nose pliers will work. Acid brush, alcohol flux, you know, pretty much the basic tools for this. Uh, you'll also need a heat gun or uh, what we call a B1C. It's a big lighter to heat, heat shrink. And uh, so anyways, that's pretty much it. I'll put a list of all the stuff in the uh, uh, description or the show more tab down below. Cut your old connector off and leave about two inches. Then after you got that done, use your hobby knife to score around it. And then once you've scored around it, then go ahead and bend it open. Like that. Sorry about the focus there. Your hand got in the camera. And then you can remove it, pull this pigtail off. There you go, like that. And that'll expose all the wires. Next thing you need to do is draw a diagram of this and get your multimeter and figure out which wire goes where. After you strip the wires back on the connector, figure out using your multimeter where all the wires go. I've already done that and this is where they go. There's seven wires there. Uh, one of them I had 22 ohms on it until I wiggled it. That was on the shield one. Uh, that's the one I'm currently on right here but it turns out it's just probably a bad internal wiring or there's something there because when I wiggled it, it went down to four and a half ohms. So I'm pretty confident that this is correct now. So now all we have to do is we have to get the connector wire uh, from uh, the actual unit and we need to strip it back and then put the new connector on. And I'll show you how to do that. It's time to go ahead and uh, strip this back. Uh, before you strip it back though, you're going to have to go ahead and put the uh, cable relief on. And this one's a compression type right here. And see this little O-ring right here? This thing right here uh, flexes. So you'll have to unscrew the, the compression nut uh, relief off that and then put this on. Also, if you've got any damage on your cable um, due to, uh, you know, whatever, you know, if you've got broken jackets, Now's a good time to go ahead and put your heat shrink on too to, in order to uh, cover it up and shrink it down to uh, protect your cable. Now you can take these and go ahead and tin them and get them ready to go into the connector. Let's grab your connector and figure out which one of these holes here go to which pins here. Once you figure that out, then you can go ahead and solder this connector into the holes. So let's go ahead and figure out where these holes go right here. I'll draw another little chart and then put numbers on it. Alright, using my meter I figured out where these holes here go and I've marked them down here. That's 10, not 16 by the way. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, one of them, 4 and 5, uh, this one went to pins 4 and 5, but you only have to put it in there obviously. But So that's where they all go. So what I need to do is just line these colors up with this and these colors on the cable and install them. So I'm going to get that done here real quick. After you get your wires tinned up, go ahead and put a loop in this wire right here after you tin the end of this one too. And wrap it around pin number, looks like five. One, two, three, four, five. And the reason is, is because four and five are supposed to be together and there's actual jumper right here, but there's not enough hole, uh, room in the hole for both wires. So put one here and then put the other one here. Put the black wire there. So let's go ahead and get all these wires in. You can use a pair of curved forceps to get, to get them in there and hold it down while you solder it. After you get the wire soldered in, go ahead and use some alcohol and an acid brush to clean up all the flux and all the ickies. Alcohol on some circuit boards will leave a white, like cloudy, powdery type substance. After you get it cleaned up, uh, go ahead and dry off your acid brush and then you can use it to wipe off any of the powdery substance. Using your diagram, check to make sure and find out where pin 16 and pin 1 are. Then use your connector here 
and verify it with this. Then go ahead and install pin 16 into the corner, which is this one down here. So if I turn this around, 16 would be in the bottom corner. Now all I have to do is take this, turn it up like that, and install it in there. Now that you've got your connector pins installed into your main connector uh, part up here that would go into your OBD plug, go ahead and take it and put it in the connector shell. After you get it installed in the shell right here, go ahead and put your uh, your cable lock right here. Don't forget to include your rubber grommet. After you get your connector in, go ahead and put your jam nut in the back for your strain relief. Uh, don't put the strain relief nut up on it just yet. You need to get the top on it. This one right here. Here we go. There you go, like that. So let me get some screws in this now. There's one. There's two. Let me roll it over. And let's get the screws on this side. Alright, that's the last screw. So what we do need to do now is put this on here. Now take your crescent wrench and tighten it up. All right, we got it all done up here. All we have to do now is uh, go test it, or if you've got bad uh, cable problems here, like I do, uh, go ahead and get your heat shrink and put it on here. And there's two ways to do this. You can just shrink it on and be done with it, or you can actually take some epoxy and put it around the ends over here and heat shrink it, and the epoxy will seal the ends so no moisture can get in here. I don't really think it's a big deal, because this connector here is not sealed internally. So I'm just not going to worry about it. Also, the wires inside have jackets on them too. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my, uh, put my shielding on here and call it good. All right, next thing you got to do is heat up your heat shrink and shrink it down and make sure your cable's all together all good. All right, there we are. All done. All I have to do is go and test it. I'm pretty sure it's going to work, but uh, I'm sure you guys know how to use it if uh, you're already looking at this video. So the ends are all covered up now, so now there's no more bare wires or a broken jacket right here. So uh, here's the connector. It's all done up. It's all cinched up. Everything is ready to go. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Talk with y'all later. Bye.